Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. Welcome to Saturday Story Circle, always on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. Chapter 12 of The Princess and the Goblin this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Andy Minter The Princess and the Goblin by George MacDonald Chapter 12 A Short Chapter About Curdie Curdie spent many nights in the mine. His father and he had taken Mrs. Peterson into the secret, for they knew Mother could hold her tongue, which was more than could be said of all the miners' wives. But Curdie did not tell her that every night he spent in the mine, part of it went in earning a new red petticoat for her. Mrs. Peterson was such a nice good mother. All mothers are nice and good, more or less. But Mrs. Peterson was nice and good, all more and no less. She made and kept a little heaven in that poor cottage on the high hillside for her husband and son to go home to, out of the low and rather dreary earth in which they worked. I doubt if the princess was very much happier, even in the arms of her huge great-grandmother, than Peter and Curdie were in the arms of Mrs. Peterson. True, her hands were hard and chapped and large, but it was with work for them, and therefore, in the sight of the angels, her hands were so much the more beautiful. And if Curdie worked hard to get her a petticoat, she worked hard every day to get him comforts which he would have missed much more than she would a new petticoat, even in winter. Not that she and Curdie ever thought of how much they worked for each other. That would have spoiled everything. When left alone in the mine, Curdie always worked on for an hour or two at first, following the load which, according to Glump, would lead at last into the deserted habitation. After that, he would set out on a reconnoitring expedition. In order to manage this, or rather the return from it, better than the first time, he had bought a huge ball of fine string— having learnt the trick from Hopper my thumb whose history his mother had often told him. Not that Hopper my thumb had ever used a ball of string, I should be sorry to be supposed to be so far out in my classics, but the principle was the same as that of the pebbles. The end of this string he fastened to his pickaxe, which he figured no bad anchor, and then, with the ball in his hand, unrolling it as he went, set out in the dark through the natural gangs of the goblins' territory. The first night or two he came upon nothing worth remembering, save only a little of the home life of the cobs in the various caves they called houses, failed in coming upon anything to cast light on the foregoing design which kept the inundation for the present in the background, but at length, I think on the third or fourth night, he found, partly guided by the noise of their influence, a company of evidently the best sappers and miners amongst them, hard at work. What were they about? It could not well be the inundation, seeing that had, in the meantime, been postponed to something else. Then what was it? He lurked and watched, every now and then, in the greatest risk of being detected, but without success. He had again and again to retreat in haste, a proceeding rendered the more difficult that he had to gather up his string as he returned upon its course. It was not that he was afraid of the goblins, but that he was afraid of their finding out that they were watched, which might have prevented the discovery at which he aimed. Sometimes his haste had to be such that, when he reached home towards morning, his string, for lack of time to wind it up as he dodged the cobs, would be in what seemed most hopeless entanglement. But after a good sleep, though a short one, he always found his mother had got it right again. There it was, wound in a most respectable ball, ready for use the moment he should want it. "'I can't think how you do it, mother,' he would say. "'They follow the thread,' she would answer, "'just as you do in the mine.' She never had more to say about it, but the less clever she was with her words, the more clever she was with her hands. 
and the less his mother said, the more Curdie believed what she had to say. But still he made no discovery as to what the goblin miners were about. End of chapter 12「Good morning! We hope you're enjoying Saturday's Story Circle. Got enough cereal? How's the coloring going? You can always join us tomorrow on Mutual with the Sunday Showcase, original audio drama from the United Artists of Audio right here on Mutual. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for exciting audio drama every day or find the Sunday Showcase feed in your favorite podcast players. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.